Welcome to today's webinar, Pull Planning, Connecting Project Teams with Better Project Outcomes. Before we get started, I want to take a brief moment to introduce Pull Plan. We're a startup technology company that is empowering the people that power projects. We build applications for construction project teams that enable them to plan, design, build, and deliver better construction projects. Augmenting existing team processes Pullplan connects team members and democratizes data, which enables project stakeholders to access real-time information and make better decisions in the moment. Incorporated in 2012, we work with organizations of all sizes across a variety of industry sectors. We have team members on three continents, bringing together subject matter experts from architecture to construction, from developers to artificial intelligence researchers. Collaboratively, we're working with clients to derive creative solutions to some of the toughest challenges we face in delivering projects in our industry. Today, we're excited to share some fundamental principles and practices of pull planning as we work through the process, how it's used, and the benefits that the program is yielding to construction project teams globally. My name is Tana Sloviniak, and I'm the CEO of Pull Plan. For someone in my current position, I've had a very non-traditional career path to end up where I am today. Most technology CEOs come from business school or computer engineering background. While I have an MBA, I began my career in construction wearing out steel-toed boots on construction projects. While my friends in college were socializing during their spring breaks and enjoying summer holidays, I was working shutdowns on night shift, mobilizing and demobilizing cranes in the cold Alberta winters, and installing firewater systems in muddy trenches during the summer months. As I transitioned through different positions throughout my career, from planning management to technical services coordination, project controls, and managing global programs, I've always had a passion for leveraging processes and technology to help effectively augment the ways that construction project teams work. As such, I've participated in and led a number of committee activities on topics of lean and advanced work packaging working with industry organizations to research and develop programs that improve project delivery processes. Today, I look forward to sharing the concept of pull planning with you. I wanna thank you for joining us and I hope that you enjoy the webinar. Before we get into the details of pull planning and how it works, I wanna table an absolutely essential topic to our discussion today, the distinction between planning and scheduling. While often used interchangeably, these two terms are not one and the same. Planning is the act of reviewing, understanding, removing barriers from, and logically sequencing work to achieve the intended goals of a project. It's collaborative in nature. It requires teams to come together, consider alternatives and options, and create a path forward that makes the best use of all project resources while serving the needs of all stakeholders. In this diagram, it's the base of the pyramid. It requires the most effort and should be heavily invested in to ensure the effectiveness of the output. Scheduling is the act of transferring the overall plan, including logical sequences, into a calendar interface to determine start dates, finish dates, and overall duration. A schedule can only effectively be created once the plan is defined. It's the top part of the pyramid. It caps off the planning process. These are two distinct parts to planning and executing effective projects. What we're talking about today is the planning facet of this pyramid. Pull planning informs the scheduling activities, not the other way around. When engaging the team in project planning activities, push planning is often the default approach. Teams begin creating a plan from the first activity, adding subsequent or successor activities, linking them each together in a logical relationship. Planning progresses from left to right. This approach often takes people down familiar paths. Because you're working forward instead of backward, you have no idea whether you will hit your target at the end of the project until you have developed the entire plan. The result is a lack of alignment with downstream needs. For example, with push planning, architecture and engineering tasks end up driving what construction can and can't do in the field. This approach can be completely detrimental to downstream productivity. Workflow isn't optimized, so teams end up lacking open work fronts. It's 
In the visual depiction of a Gantt chart you can see up on your screen right now, any delay in early engineering activities will negatively impact downstream construction activities. And what typically happens with a push planning approach is that engineering or architecture activities are streamlined based on their optimal workflow, which doesn't necessarily take into consideration what the downstream stakeholders require. So in this case, what may happen is engineering or architecture teams may be pushing out packages of drawings that don't support what construction actually needs in the field. So as a result, construction ends up working out of sequence or perhaps doesn't have the right information at the time that they need it to do the work in an optimal manner. So what happens is construction teams end up wandering around, spending time looking for work that they can do and therefore suffer a lack of productivity as a result. On today's projects, too often the planning process is simply replaced with scheduling activities. So planning doesn't actually happen, it's purely a scheduling exercise. The schedule is built to encompass the plan, but doesn't really contain input from the team. In some cases, team members are involved, but not always the right team members. So take a moment and consider whether you have recently encountered any of these scenarios. Have you worked on a recent project where the scheduler created the first pass of each plan and then circled it around for the team to review? Have you worked on a project recently where schedule sequences and task durations were handed out to those responsible to execute the work without their input? Have you experienced cost and schedule overruns because the estimated task durations weren't realistic? Have you experienced delays because predecessor activities were late or task constraints hadn't been resolved? Without beginning with the end in mind and engaging the right stakeholders in the development of plans, the result is too often subpar performance. Planning matters, and a plan is more than just a nice looking Gantt chart. The result of siloed schedule development is that the end user or the task owner wasn't involved in the planning process from the beginning. They don't understand the plan, they don't own it, and therefore they don't often feel much accountability to it. The plan was developed by somebody else, by another group, by another team, by another party. It's their plan. And when there's a lack of engagement in the plan overall, it begins to break down. Having spent a significant portion of my career in the field, project schedules are often referred to as wall art. They're referred to this way because they're highly complex, colored pieces of paper that often plaster the walls of project board and meeting rooms. They look great up on the wall, but without the input from the right stakeholders, that's really the only purpose they serve. I can say firsthand that when the end user is not involved in developing the plan, they often don't even work to it. They report to it because it's a mandatory report, but what's actually occurring, whether in architecture, engineering, procurement, construction, completions, or commissioning is actually something very different. It's highly misaligned from what's listed on the Gantt chart. That's the end result of putting more focus on scheduling than planning and on pushing planning sequences instead of pulling them. Teams that are using pull planning effectively understand the challenges that push planning creates, and they're taking steps to mitigate the risk. They're engaging stakeholders, and they're enhancing the potential for better project outcomes. Pull planning helps teams get past wall art, so what's posted on the walls is actually meaningful and has a purpose. For those of you that work in the industry, these statistics aren't going to come as a surprise. Project performance in our industry is notoriously subpar. According to a recent study by McKinsey and Company, the larger the project, the more complexity and the more opportunity for misalignment between the path of design, the path of procurement, and the path of construction. Think of a project as a three-legged race. When each team member is tied at the ankle and told to move toward the goal line, progress is only made if they move in sequence. If each team member moves their own way, they likely won't go anywhere at all. And worst case scenario, they just fall down. Construction projects aren't consistently late because they're difficult to execute or because that's just the way it is. 
Performance is poor because each team is trying to move in its own direction. It's time to get aligned at the beginning and walk down the path as the same team. You may not run as fast as you could on your own, but only this way does the entire team cross the same finish line in the fastest way possible. Pull planning is a lean construction methodology, which is adapted from lean manufacturing principles. For those that are familiar with lean manufacturing approaches, lean construction as a practice is very similar, but takes into account the project-based nature of our work. While we aren't building cars or widgets, there's still a great deal of draw on lean manufacturing methodology in lean construction. The goal of lean programs is to add value and remove waste. You can't accomplish those goals without considering how all of the moving parts on a project interact. By focusing on improving flow and optimizing resources, teams can plan and deliver more successful projects. If you've ever planned any work scope in the past using sticky notes on a whiteboard, you've probably performed pull planning in some form or another. It often seems a bit chaotic at first, especially to those that aren't familiar with the program, but as sticky notes are added to the board and conversations begin to occur, those sticky notes are positioned and repositioned until an intricate and well-defined plan really begins to take form. That plan not only outlines the sequence of activities, but more importantly, it outlines the sequence of activities and handoffs between each task owner. Pull planning is a collaborative process. That's the only way it works. Task owners must be present for the planning program to yield the most value. This approach isn't simply about sequencing a list of tasks. It's about spawning conversations between task owners that empower them to optimize their resources, identify risks, and resolve issues collectively. Questions can be tabled and discussed, if there's gaps in the plan, they become evident as tasks are being moved around and reviewed. Most importantly, through this collaborative approach though, team members are making commitments to each other. They agree to meet target task durations and as such are agreeing to meet commitments that support the next task owner. This creates a very different mentality than being given a task duration. With pull planning, the task owner defines the duration, agrees to it, and is held accountable to it by their peers. At a high level, the collaborative nature of pull planning drives an ownership of the plan that is not at all common with traditional push planning approaches. Consider this scenario. Say someone approaches you and asks you to build them a website for their new architecture firm. You agree and get to work. You create a plan and have your developers work on it. They quickly create a fully functional website loaded with stock photos and great graphics. You're quite proud of your team's accomplishment. You call up the owner of the architecture firm and tell them their project is mostly complete. You're just adding the final bells and whistles. Hurrah, you're almost done. The client, much to your surprise, asks that the website be complete in two days to meet the company launch date and have full e-commerce functionality to process a major order expected just four days after launch. This probably would have been good information to work into the plan from the beginning, right? This scenario sounds ridiculous in the context of web development, yet in the construction industry, it happens all the time. Ask any piping team how often systems completion priorities are announced well after the construction plan has been finalized and is well underway. Pushing tasks instead of pulling towards the final needs is the norm in our industry. It's also completely illogical. We should always begin with the end in mind, as the famous Covey statement goes. As the name implies, pull planning is accomplished by pulling activity sequences instead of pushing them. Instead of beginning with the first task, we begin with the final task. We anchor that task to define a requirement or a target completion date we identify what we are working towards. Then predecessor tasks are continually added until the entire scope is identified in sticky notes 
and sequenced in a logical order, pulling toward the final requirements. Now we can do this at a variety of levels of granularity. We can start out with major milestones and pull them towards the target completion date of the project, or we can break that scope out into different phases. We may call these construction work areas or floors. You can also pull activities within a defined time period or a look ahead. Once created, those pull plans can be used to develop and execute on weekly work plans, where team members get together to deliver on their promised tasks and durations to support the overall project plan. As I mentioned before, it's important to get the right people involved when facilitating a pull planning session. This is one of the biggest mistakes that teams make when they're new to pull planning. They don't have the right people in the room. Now you can hold these sessions either remotely or in person, but they're only effective with input from all requisite stakeholders. So think of it this way, every individual that owns a task within that plan should be present during the planning meeting. Where necessary, this should involve multiple disciplines and even multiple consultants and contractors. Planning in silos, as we discussed earlier, isn't effective. Pull planning necessitates conversations that are open, candid, and real. Difficult issues must be tabled and addressed. Questions need to be asked to challenge plan logic where it doesn't make sense. We want people thinking outside of the box here. With pull planning, there is no box. You start at the end and build a plan that makes sense and optimizes resources for the team. Just because you've always done it a certain way doesn't mean that's how the team has to do it this time. Look at options, look at alternatives, minimize waste and enhance value. When facilitating a pull planning session, some of the individuals that may be present may include project managers, architects, engineers, consultants, subcontractor representatives, inspectors, and foremen. It's also really good practice to appoint a facilitator for the session. This individual keeps conversations moving and planning progressing and also ensures that teams don't stall on complex technical issues. To begin a pull planning session, we create an anchor milestone and pin it to the far right of the whiteboard. This is our final deliverable, which all predecessor tasks must support. We then have task owners create sticky notes that define all of the tasks required to be completed within the particular scope of work that is being pulled. Each task owner is responsible for creating their own sticky notes. Each task must be clearly defined and well delineated. Task scope shouldn't be fuzzy. Each task owner has their own color of sticky notes. This makes it very easy to discern who owns which task in the plan. Task owners move their sticky notes around collaboratively, placing them on the board where they best fit with the overall flow of activities. This process should encompass a lot of discussion. Teams work together to minimize waste in the plan. It's also important to note that a task owner should not move the sticky note of another task owner. If another task needs to move, that should be decided on through conversation. Only the sticky note owner may move their sticky note. Once the tasks are all sequenced in a logical order and handoffs between task owners are well-defined, the team does a complete walkthrough from start to finish to make sure that the task sequence makes sense and that there's no gaps in the plan. You may have noticed that there are no dates on the chart. This is by design, and this confuses a lot of people when they're new to pull planning. Team members at this point are considering only the flow of tasks and identifying durations for each. Dates will only be assigned to tasks after the plan is complete. There are many benefits to pull planning work by phase. One of those benefits is helping us ensure that key milestones will be met. Because we're always working towards that target completion date, we're ensuring that we're sequencing task flow in a way that supports that required deliverable. We're also ensuring that task handoffs are clearly defined. One of the greatest causes of waste in a construction project is poorly defined handoff terms. 
What that means is that one task owner may finish their task with poor communication to the next task owner that that predecessor task has been completed. Or in some cases, there are delays or issues with the predecessor task the, the successor task owner isn't aware of. Think of it this way. You may have a tiling contractor that is running two days late and your drywall contractor needs to get into the space after them. They show up and mobilize their crew, not realizing that the previous task owner is delayed. That lack of communication can result in poor productivity as well as claims against the project, which obviously we want to try and avoid. Pull planning work by phases also enables us to identify and mitigate constraints. So if we're, as we're having those conversations, people are having discussions around where tasks are being placed and some of those handoffs that need to occur. They're having conversations around things that are required to complete their work. Now, in some cases, these constraints may be relatively minor, but in some cases, they are fairly significant. It may require a specialized resource or uh, special equipment that needs to be mobilized to site. So where those constraints exist, team members need to be having conversations around how to manage and mitigate them to make sure that there's no productivity loss, and no waste in the plan. Teams can move directly from one task to the next in a very streamlined manner. Pull planning work by phase also allows us to establish expectations and require team members to make commitments. So in traditional scheduling methods where a Gantt chart is simply distributed to the team, there's no requirement to make a commitment to what's in the Gantt chart. The plan was created by somebody else. There's no ownership over it. It's not my plan. When we build a plan collectively, when the whole team gets together and has their input, they're required to make commitments in front of their peers. As a result, we're establishing very clear expectations. The team knows what the plan is, what the expectations of them are, and they work very diligently to make sure that they're performing to that level of expectation. One of the other benefits of pull planning is that it encourages difficult conversations early. Rather than having those conversations as work is being executed, whether that's during design or in construction, we want to make sure that we're tabling those discussions in the planning sessions where we have the potential for work area conflict or resource shortages. We want to make sure we're identifying those problems early, not late in the project where it could potentially cause cost or schedule issues. Once your phase pull plans have been created and scheduled, you can start breaking those down into look aheads. Within any phase, you can select a three to six week window and break larger tasks down into more granular ones, really sequencing them day by day. The longer your look ahead is, the less accurate it will be. And so for this reason, teams often opt to produce shorter look aheads so their planning windows are more accurate. As we start to produce look aheads, we take a closer look at constraints and work toward resolution. Constraints are a lot like roadblocks. Where they exist, they're going to prevent work from being completed. When teams have to deal with constraints when they're supposed to be completing tasks, the result is often productivity loss and waste. So by sequencing tasks out by day, the team has a great opportunity to review task durations, discuss what is possible and reasonable, and work collectively to sequence task handoffs and define expectations. The look ahead view also provides the team with a great short term insight into their resource requirements. Where there are days where no work is being completed, where it makes sense, other work may be resequenced to fill in the gaps. This may include cleanup of punch items or even testing work. So we can also take the same approach at a weekly level. Task owners commit to the work that will be completed each day and as a result, will be held accountable for completing those tasks. With pull planning, performance is measured daily. Where targets aren't met, reasons why are discussed to prevent issue recurrence on later tasks. So if you contrast this to traditional planning and scheduling methods, schedule reviews are often done on a week or two week basis. So by the time the whole team is sitting down and looking at what happened over the last week or two weeks, that data is old. So it makes it very difficult to make decisions because you're not looking at what's happening now. You're looking at what happened two weeks ago. So as a result, pull planning creates a very different team culture. 
With schedules, the content is only reviewed after the fact, so the level of transparency is relatively low. With poll planning, teams are reviewing the poll plans each day. The transparency is high, and as a result, teams work together to achieve goals and complete their work more effectively. So as work is progressing throughout the project, we record and report percent plan complete. This is a comparison of how many tasks were finished by their plan completion date to all tasks that were planned to be completed within a specific window. For example, if I'm required to complete two tasks this week and I only complete one on time, my percent plan complete is only 50%. Each project sets a target PPC score. The team score is then aggregated by day or by week to determine whether the team is meeting the target or not. Some teams actually perform this calculation by individual, where each task owner is scored on a daily or weekly basis. However you approach this, real-time metrics empower you to see what's happening, which in turn enables you to make better decisions with better data. People often ask me, why make the switch? We use CPM schedules now, we plan as best we can. And then there's the dreaded phrase, this is the way we've always done things. Nothing irritates me more. Why try poll planning? Because current project delivery models are unpredictable. Sometimes project teams win, but too often the results are more in line with those we presented earlier, with cost and schedule overruns being the norm. Poll planning shifts the dynamic. It moves people away from entrenched execution models and enables them to collaboratively consider what's best for the project, regardless of what's always been done. Pull planning creates value. Just ask any team that is using the practice. Whether they're creating paper sticky notes or digital sticky notes, they're building more effective plans that lead to better project outcomes. For those of you that have spent any time in the field on projects, this site probably feels familiar. You may even be sitting at your desk right now adjusting your tie as you look at stacks of binders piling up around you. We're still a very paper-based industry. And while paper-based processes no doubt yield value, that value is limited. Construction ranks second to last in digitization, pulling ahead of hunting and agriculture. I don't even think we beat out gathering. You can use Google Maps for gathering, or I guess, depending on what you're looking for, you could use Pokemon Go. And while there's no shortage of solutions out there, taking steps towards digitization can be challenging. I've always said that good tech augments good process. Once you have a good process in place, technology will exponentially improve your performance. For those out there still using manual poll planning processes, you already have the foundation for a digital program taking that next step towards digitization and adding tools that reduce waste and speed up workflows can yield dramatically positive results. Pull planning as a practice yields project value. That's why it's used so many teams globally. The challenges with manual pull planning are many though. Once the plan is created, Updates require a team member to return to the physical board to mark up the task. Change is difficult to manage. As sticky notes get moved around the board, some team members disengage with the process. People can lose sight of what the plan looked like and what it should look like now. Data isn't always actionable. Because it's verbally provided in update meetings, teams often struggle to capture all of that data and generate effective insight. And finally, you can't manage what you can't see. For someone who is off-site, it's nearly impossible to see what's happening and manage accordingly. This is especially true if you have distributed teams. Pull plan is an application that augments the pull planning process. The pull planning session still takes place, but with pull plan, that session can be completed digitally. Digital sticky notes replace paper ones. Tasks are linked within the application to sequence and schedule work automatically. Data is captured, recorded, and stored. There's a record of every plan and every decision that takes place. 
And there's no risk of sticky notes losing their stick and falling off and ending up on the floor, which is very common in manual pole planning scenarios. Every task is assigned a duration. Links between tasks are then created by drawing arrows between them. Simple to use, visual, and engaging the entire team, the project, phase, or look ahead plan is created. Then pull plan gets to work and does the hard work for you. Based on the task anchor created, pull plan smart sequences all activities to produce a schedule with the shortest possible duration to meet the plan completion or anchor date. You can see here that the Gantt chart has auto populated the plan start and plan finish dates for all tasks to optimize the workflow and minimize the overall project duration. Those Gantt charts can be exported to scheduling programs such as Microsoft Project or Primavera. They can also be exported as an Adobe PDF document to print or display for the project team. As tasks are executed, reports are updated in real time. You can see a sample report here that shows us we've had some properties that were changed since the last snapshot was taken. We can also see a task where the task duration has decreased and a task where the task duration has increased. Unlike traditional scheduling programs, when you pull a report from Pull Plan, it's to the minute. And the reason for that is every project task owner is active within the ecosystem. Data is being created, consumed, and leveraged as it's entered into the system. So when you make decisions, you're pulling from real-time information. You know exactly what's going on, what happened, why it happened, and how you can take action to mitigate that risk in the future or take action to make sure that that success was replicated. Digital poll planning doesn't eliminate the need for collaboration. It enhances the ability to collaborate. In the past, distributed teams found poll planning challenging as it required them to be present in the same room. Teams often found change to be difficult to manage in manual processes, with plans falling by the wayside as resequencing and field changes occurred. Lastly, teams using manual poll planning approaches require in-person discussions to take place to resolve problems and identify solutions. With digital poll planning, all of those activities still occur, but you have another medium through which to perform them. Need access to the latest performance report? Don't drive over to the boardroom, pull up the app on your laptop. Run into a problem and need the team to know, send a task chat. Task going to be delayed? Mark a delay and auto-notify the downstream task owner of the impact. Good technology augments good process. If you have a solid manual process, your outcomes could be exponentially enhanced with the digital automation of time-consuming activities. Here's a quick snapshot of a task chat. Like a social channel for projects, task chat enables team members to engage in collaborative discussions with the team, no matter where they are in the world. So why go digital? One of the primary benefits of digital tools is the ability to democratize data. We produce no shortage of data in our industry today. From documents to spreadsheets to databases, we are constantly creating new sources of information. But by leveraging technology effectively, you can use that information to make better decisions. And when the entire team can access that information, everyone can make better decisions in the moment when they need to. Change can be easily tracked and managed. Team accountability is quantifiable every day. Where issues are occurring, they can be identified and mitigated as soon as they happen. We work with organizations all over the world in a variety of construction sectors. One of the most successful case studies that we've had was the ability of a distributed team working in multiple locations to communicate and collaborate across time zones effectively using the pull plan application. They got rid of the need for emails and phone calls. Everything happened within the app. Communication was real time. 
And across time zones and multiple continents, those individuals were able to communicate problems, resolve them, and deliver more successful projects. I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar today. If you'd like more information on PolPlan, visit us online at www.polplan.com, where you can start a 10-day free trial and see the power of digital poll planning yourself.